everyone and welcome to my channel Bevy with Beth. My name is Beth and today I'm just drinking a normal coffee. Needed a bit of caffeine to keep me going this evening um, because today we're going to be talking about uh, my mental health. So this one's going to be a bit depressing <laughs> because we're going to be talking about the bad stuff and um, the ways that my PCOS affected my mental health um, what that kind of looked like and what happened. So a bit of a trigger warning if those kind of depression and anxiety talks aren't something that you're um, in a position to handle right now then I completely understand. Give this video a miss there'll be other ones that you can watch um, or just wait for the part two where I talk a little bit more positively about what I've been doing since my diagnosis um, and how I've kind of uh, moved up from that. Um, but other than declaring of course that I'm not a mental health professional so I'm not here to give you any advice I'm simply here to talk about what my experience was um, and kind of shed a little light on how PCOS affects our mental health um, so with that being said let's get into it First thing that I do feel like I need to say before we get into this um, is that um, it's going to be a bit of a difficult video for me to film because um, I didn't really handle things properly. So I've learnt um, a few coping mechanisms and bits and pieces for myself um, but at the point when I realised that I was in serious trouble I didn't seek professional help. So I'm going to leave some links in the description below in some places um, in the UK that you can get help um, because um, if you've realised that you need it then this is a place that you can reach out for it um, but I didn't <laughs> and I was lucky and I managed to get through it and with the diagnosis and the support of people around me I managed to make it through um, but I think if we can make these place these things available to people in lots of different places then maybe you won't be as stupid as me and we'll be able to get the help that you need um so while i'm talking about all of this i now i mean i knew at the time but now even more so i realized that there were lots of places i could have gone for help um and didn't um because i am the kind of person who likes to deal with things on my own and i only really like talking about things once they're solved so you'll probably find that a lot <laughs> on my channel if you keep you know, if you keep watching me, you're going to see that I'll suddenly bring up things and be like, yeah, I remember a few months ago, I was talking about X, Y, and Z, and now here we are six months later and uh, yeah, got it sorted. So I feel like I can talk about my mental health journey now because I'm doing so much better. There's still a lot of progress that I do need to make because again, I'm, you know, professional help is the only way really to get um, a proper control on it. Um, but I can talk about how bad it was back then. Um, and kind of shed a little light on why or how PCOS affects our mental health so that if you either haven't been diagnosed yet or have been diagnosed but nobody's really mentioned the mental health side of it that maybe you can see oh yeah actually that's me and you can see that you're not a crazy person it's actually our hormones which have such a big impact on our mental health so um it started obviously a few years before I got diagnosed. Um, but my, I never really struggled with any kind of depression or anxiety or anything until my symptoms got very bad when it came to the insulin resistance. And what had happened was um, I'd left the job that I've been, well, I hadn't been working in that particular place, but the work type that I'd been doing for about eight and a half years, I walked out of that job because it wasn't any good for me, found a new one, didn't like it much. Um, and I didn't like working there. They didn't like me working there. Like it just, the whole thing just didn't work. And I was like, no, that's fine. I'll leave and, you know, just give me a few weeks to find another job and I, and I will get out of here. Um, well, during that time, my housemate then said that she also wanted to move on. So I had lost my house and my job at the same time. And I ended up back at my mum and dad's. 
so I was really lucky that we were in a situation where my mum and dad could take me in um, and I was trying to find work in their local area because it was outside of the city where I had been working before and um, there was nothing and I was unemployed for a few months and I used up all the money, all the deposit that I'd had back from the house and all of that kind of stuff it was all gone now um, and I finally, finally found this job and it was absolutely brilliant. There is a point to this um and i really enjoyed working for the company it was a small company i like i really excelled and then i was constantly putting on weight um and i put that down mainly to not having a great diet i was traveling in from where my parents live into the nearest city um so like my days were like 12 hours long um Although I'd take lunch in, we were in the city centre, so we used to top everything up, and so I was eating a lot and eating a lot of sugar, which I've always been pretty reactive to. Um, so I knew it wasn't great, and I put it down to that. And then we got to this position where um, I started to get really bad... No, I don't want to say really bad, but I also don't want to minimise my own suffering. Like, I had depression, okay? Triggering event was the death of my dog. Um, we had to have her put it down, she had leukemia, um, and that's when I fell into, like, depression. I'm not going to give any gradient on it, it just was depression. Um, and along with that actually came the anxiety, which I found harder to deal with for myself because of how my brain works. I was so logical, unemotional. Well, I'm not emotionally driven. I'm not unemotional. I'm just not emotionally driven when it comes to decisions and things I, I don't use my emotions to make decisions so the biggest problem I had was that my anxiety was very social based like I, I hated interacting with people even being near people like when I was on the train and it was busy and oh yeah even that proximity to people was really really difficult to me so I was okay in my house with my parents and I was okay at work with my colleagues because they were very much my friends at the time um we weren't just colleagues, we didn't know each other outside of work, we spent time together outside of work, it just was a real family, small business feeling, it was lovely. So I was okay there. The commute in and out was really bad. Um, so that was very exhausting, as well as on top of course being ill, as I didn't know at the time. Um, but the biggest problem was that my job um, was telemarketing, <laughs> which literally requires me to phone up strangers and ask them to purchase services or products that they don't know whether they need or not and you have to try and convince them and I became obviously really really bad at that. I was totally oblivious to the fact that I was avoiding the work. I was just like oh yeah I'm just doing what I can um, and then we started I started getting into the recruitment side of things which was much easier for me. I was having much more positive conversations with people um, and talking to them about the job that I loved doing because I did love doing it in so many ways it was just the the actual when someone picked up the phone that was a problem um, so of course I then ended up losing that job as well and it wasn't until uh, November so what six months after that I spent a couple of months on a couple of months unemployed then I got the job that I'm in currently, um, and it was about, yeah, about four months then into that job that I got diagnosed. Um, so I'd struggled very badly with the depression side of things, and I kind of knew what that was. Um, I've seen depression before, people talk about depression all the time, um, and I knew what it was, but um, I didn't realise how bad it was until it was confirmed that they weren't going to keep me on at that company where I really loved working, but I could tell that I, you know, I wasn't performing. Um, and I kept hoping that this ad, that a more admin based role where I could do the recruitment more kind of full time, uh, was going to come up and it just didn't. The company just didn't grow in that direction for another few months. And um, that because then it was like I was losing another job. It meant I was going to be unemployed again. Um, and although I had paid off my debts at that point, um, I was still living with my parents and relying on them to kind of help me out with stuff and uh, the traveling, I couldn't, you know, I wasn't completely self-reliant. I needed my dad to get me so far. Um, and that's kind of when the real sort of 
suicidal thoughts came in because as you do with depression you end up feeling um like really worthless and i was such a burden on everybody all the time and the problem i found really difficult was even on my good days i still felt like that because it just was the truth um and i went for an interview while i was still employed and didn't get that job and that was kind of like the last straw for me then really um unfortunately at that point my parents took me away and we went on holiday um and that kind of gave me the breathing space from all of the traveling and all the trying to do the work and not being able to and all that kind of drama that was happening at that time um to kind of keep myself going um because in fact i hadn't paid off my debts and one of the things that kept me going the most was the fact that my dad would have to pay my debts um, that i still had a good couple of thousand pounds like it, if it was just a few hundred it probably wouldn't have mattered but i had a good couple of thousand pounds and it wasn't until a month after that that i actually paid off the debts and that's kind of what kept me going really was if i was a burden in life <laughs> i was definitely going to be a bigger burden in death so um let's not do that to them um and it wasn't until i got diagnosed that um, i did some research that i realized that this was very much um, a hormone imbalance pcos induced condition situation um, especially with the social anxiety so i think the anxiety is what really got in the way of my job um, and possibly if I'd not had the anxiety, especially with it being so social, um, that maybe I could have kept job stability and I may have felt like I could have done more about the depression. But because the anxiety was messing up my job, like I just felt like there wasn't anything, um, there wasn't any way out because it was so fundamental to how I was failing, if that makes sense. Um, and I was really struggling because I wasn't able to see any of my friends because I was living out of town. Um, and I tried to get to my friend's birthday and that went wrong. And that's when I had like a little kind of a mini breakdown as I tried to get to her birthday. And at the time I was obviously really struggling with body dysmorphia as well because I'd put on all this weight and um, I was struggling to move in the way that I wanted to. Um, kind of as an ex-dancer and do you know what I mean like it was um I had pretty bad dysmorphia about how fat I was um and how much of that made me a bad person as well taking the time to do all my makeup I think I even put on a nice dress um and like really did myself up and then did I miscalculate or did I tell my dad the wrong time or something had happened but I made a mistake and it meant that we missed the train to get me into the city for my friend's birthday and I had a complete breakdown washed all the makeup off put on some pajamas and I was like no I'm just not going my dad was like you could just go an hour later anyway I had this complete mental breakdown um and eventually they did convince me to go. My dad drove me out there. Um, and so there's a picture, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but um, there's a picture of me on that evening and I hate that picture so much because although probably anybody else seeing it um, probably had no idea, like I don't think my friends have any idea that literally a couple of hours, not even that, like an hour before, two hours before that photo was taken I was literally sobbing my heart out at home um and I just I just didn't tell anyone um I hid it all the time like none of my colleagues knew I don't know how much my parents did or didn't know like when my mum offered to take me away I'm not sure how much of that was motivated by maybe we shouldn't leave her alone and how much of it was just oh she's having a hard time let's be nice um I don't know because again we never talk about it either um and 
then uh, it was then that I met um, somebody online and suddenly I felt like I had somebody that I could talk to and just be really honest about how I was feeling and how I was struggling um, without any judgment or dependency like he didn't have to do anything we couldn't do anything he was um, in another country um, but it just gave me someone to talk to and that's when things started to get better and then obviously I had my diagnosis um, and basically the reason my hormones had become so unbalanced wasn't just um, my diet, which was really bad at the time, and obviously a major factor. Um, it was actually also because I'd moved back to my parents' house, I'd um, stopped taking the pill. And basically my hormones were just raging. I, you know, like I look back and I keep finding little, even more evidence of how out of whack my hormones were so, and it all came down to this one diagnosis of PCOS so when I went to the doctors um, anyway to talk about my weight and, and to get back on the pill I just wanted to get back on the pill um, I knew that um, I was so much better sleep was better my moods were better everything was just better when I was on the pill so I knew I wanted to get back onto that anyway and of course it was through all of that talking about the weight gain um, I had some infections and some hair follicles on my leg which again is a really common thing with um high sugar high blood sugar levels but i'll get into that in another um in another video and they're like all these little things that then made my doctor realize that it was pcos so then really as soon as i went back on the pill my mental health started to get back to normal as it were um i think also things like time passing from the death of my dog um getting used to that kind of again i had a job change and the stress in my job so it wasn't it wasn't sales orientated it wasn't customer service orientated i could just go in do a bit nothing would come home i didn't you know it was a really it is a really low stress job um and i think that was really good and as i say i had somebody to talk to where i you know no judgment or action to be taken i could just tell them what i was thinking and feeling and that was just okay um so i think that helped a lot then i got back on the pill and had um all my hormones rebalancing which made a big difference and then i've taken a lot of steps since then um to kind of correct my mental health if you liked this video if you thought um, it was interesting or maybe helpful or if maybe you related to it a little bit then do give it a thumbs up um because that means quite a lot to me when i see that people are actually enjoying the videos um, and obviously if you've got anything that you want me to cover more specifically or if you have any questions for me about what was happening at the time then again leave it in the comment down below um, and i will get back to you um normally within a day <laughs> um i try and get back to people when they they do comment so um, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, see you in the next one.